Hello everyone and welcome to game number 7 of the 1970 uh, Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament. Uh, here Bobby Fischer faces with the white pieces uh, Milan Matulovic, Serbian Grandmaster. And in those days, uh, somewhere from 1960 to 1970, uh, okay, Svetozar Gligoric probably, I'm pretty sure, uh, was the best uh, Yugoslav Grandmaster. But then in second place, uh, he definitely would have either Milan Matulovic or, or Borislav Ivkov. So definitely a strong grandmaster, and he has faced Bobby Fischer before. Uh, when Fischer was visiting Belgrade in 1958, uh, uh, he played a, a training match, a four-game match against uh, Milan Matulovic, and uh, only one game uh, was saved from that match, from the four-game match. It was a game uh, that Milan Matulovic won. Uh, I, I've never cover, actually covered that game, but I will put a link to it in the description below so you can check it out if you want. And uh, after that, uh, they have faced each other a couple of times. Uh, some, some of them were blitz games, some of them were classical uh, uh, time control. Uh, but uh, before this game, uh, Fisher, Fisher, uh, the score is 2-1 uh, to one in Fisher's favor, uh, I believe. Uh, and uh, two, two games were also won by Fisher, but uh, those were blitz games. So uh, a very interesting uh, matchup. And uh, it, it's also very interesting that uh, Milan Matulovic uh, won the Yugoslav Championship two times, and he competed uh, plenty of times for the Olympiad. Uh, so definitely, definitely a strong opponent, and it's very interesting. I've never actually seen this game uh, before preparing it now for this series. Uh, it's uh, extremely enjoyable, and uh, Matulovic really, really plays an, an excellent game. So let's check it out. Fischer, of course, opens with e4. Uh, Matulovic goes uh, for the Sicilian defense. We have c5, knight f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. Uh, Fischer goes for the Rosolimo or the Nejmedinov Rosolimo variation. Uh, we have g6, uh, now comes c3, knight to f6, and queen e2. Uh, bishop to g7, now e5, uh, knight to d5, and now uh, queen to c4. A very interesting move by Fischer, uh, attacking the c5 pawn and also attacking the d5 knight. Uh, so what do you do here? Uh, in the game, knight to c7 was played. If you play something like queen to b6, what idea? So defending the c5 pawn, and okay, if queen captures here, then queen can capture bishop. Uh, you could simply play d4, and after d6, pawn captures, pawn captures, and now queen to e2 check. And uh, black would either face uh, something like bishop to e6 followed by c4 or he would have to move king f8 uh, and lose castling privileges. But here Matulovic plays a very interesting move, uh, a very nice pawn sacrifice that really gains so much activity. Uh, here Matulovic played knight to c7. Uh, Fischer accepts the challenge, he plays uh, bishop captures on c6, we have uh, d captures on c6 uh, and now queen captures on c5. So grabbing a pawn but uh, it will be very hard. Uh, for him to, to justify grabbing this pawn. Uh, Matulovic immediately plays queen to d3. Queen to d3 is a beautiful move. Uh, as uh, Fischer did play c3, you can't develop with knight to c3. You can't push the d pawn. You cannot castle. The queen is slicing all the way here. Uh, so, of course, Fischer grabbed the pawn. He wants to exchange queens. And okay, Matulovic doesn't mind, but first he will play bishop to f5, uh, protecting his queen. Uh, Fischer accepts, uh, so queen captures, we have bishop captures, and now the bishop does the same job the queen did, uh, stifling uh, white's development, also preventing uh, Fischer from castling, and uh, there's not all that much you can do here. You can try developing with knight to a3, that's uh, not something you want to do when you're uh, you know, down in development. Uh, so first, king to d1. Uh, Fischer is preparing to bring the rook into the game uh, via rook to e1. Uh, we have knight to e6, and now comes knight to e1, attacking Matulovic's bishop on d3. Uh, and now comes knight to f4. Again, uh, Matulovic uh, wants to uh, uh, get his knight over to d3, so then the knight will be preventing Fischer from, <laughs> from developing uh, any of his pieces. Uh, Fischer captures, knight captures on d3. We have knight captures on d3, uh, and now comes uh, f4. A very interesting move. Uh, you could play something like king to c2. Uh, sorry about that, king to c2, getting the king out of the way, uh, giving back one pawn, uh, but instead of this, Fischer actually protects uh, this pawn, uh, he offers the f4 pawn, but also he offers knight to f2 check. Uh, so Matulovic can actually win the exchange here. And the engine is really going crazy for this, but it's very interesting and it's very impressive uh, how Matulovic doesn't want to grab the exchange. Matulovic wants to keep uh, playing this position actively, uh, and he plays bishop to h6. Uh, playing something like knight captures to f4, okay, you grab a pawn, but then you allow d4. 
uh, White really improved his position. Uh, he's bringing the Rook into the game. All of his pieces can now develop. So all would be well here for White. So if you're if you're going for material, then you could have uh, played Knight to F2, check and grab the Rook. But uh, he decided to go Bishop to H6. So okay, now Fisher goes King to C2. He attacks the Knight, and here we have uh, Knight captures on C1. Again, it would be, uh, if you play something like knight captures on f4 here, then white would really get ahead. Uh, because now after d4, the knight is pinned. The bishop on h6 is undefended. Here you would have to go g5. Uh, and after g3, knight d5, uh, you could play h4. The pawn is still pinned. The bishop on h6 is undefended. Uh, Fisher would have an excellent game here. So after king to c2, knight captures on c1. We have uh, rook to e2 first. Uh, and now uh, we have castles. It would be pretty much the same if you first uh, captured an f4, uh, for example, g3, after the bishop moves only now capture, uh, but Matulovic uh, still wants to keep all of his uh, pieces active. So first, uh, queenside castle, bringing a rook into the game. Now we have king captures on c1, and only now bishop captures on f4. g3, uh, protecting the h2 pawn, we have bishop back to h6, and now king to c2. Uh, as the d2 pawn is pinned, Fisher really wants to push d4. And here we have rook to d5. It's a, it's a very nice move. Uh, when I first saw this position, I thought, okay, of white, of course, wants to play d4. Naturally, why not push c5? And while, while engine, to does, engine doesn't mind the c5 move, uh, he also doesn't mind rook to d5 move. Uh, so rook to d5 here. Uh, we have b4 by Fisher expanding on the queen side, b6, uh, a4, a5 now, and now b captures on a5. b captures on a5, and now rook to e4. Uh, we have rook h to d8, and now comes d4. So, okay, only now does Matulovic finally push c5. We have c5, uh, king to d3, and now pawn captures on d4. Uh, c captures on d4, and now bishop to g7. Uh, in some variations, if this rook moves, then bishop will be able to capture here as the pawn is pinned. So first king to e3, and now bishop back to h6 with check. Uh, Fisher has to go back, king to d3, and now bishop back to g7. And here Fisher doesn't want to repeat, still Fisher wants to push this uh, all the way. Uh, he plays king to c4. Uh, we have f5 attacking Fisher's rook. Uh, and now, although Fisher can move his rook to h4, then Matulovic would attack it once again with the g5. Uh, instead, knight to c3 is played. And here, a very nice move by Matulovic, e6. Uh, e6, now Fisher doesn't have uh, the opportunity to trade down, because after you capture here, then your king is in check, you have to move the king, uh, and then decaptures on e4, grabs another rook, uh, and then Matulovic would simply be up, up a piece. So after this e6 move, rook to h4 is played, going after the h7 pawn, uh, but now comes g5, attacking the rook. Uh, rook captures on h7, the d4 pawn is no longer protected, now comes rook captures on d4 with check. Uh, king to b5, a very dangerous game by Fisher, as he's really bringing his king, uh, you know, uh, in, inside of black's territory. Uh, we have bishop captures on e5, and now comes rook to c1. Uh, we have rook to b4, this comes with check, again a very nice move by Matulovic, forcing Fisher's king uh, all the way to the a-file, uh, while temporarily sacrificing a pawn, uh, king captures on an a5, and only now rook to c4, uh, not allowing any discovered checks from Fisher. Uh, we have knight to e2, offering a trade of rooks, now first rook to d5 check, uh, king moves to b6, and now rook to c5, doubling up on the c-file. Uh, Fisher has to trade down here, we have rook captures, rook captures, and now h4. Uh, Fisher is down, uh, not down in material, but uh, he wants to create a passed pawn uh, on, the, on the king side as well, as he does have one on the queen side. Uh, we have rook to c2, attacking Fisher's knight, and uh, here it's uh, very hard to do something with this knight. As you can see, the, the bishop is controlling the knight here, uh, the knight can't really go anywhere, the only place the knight could go to is g1, uh, but then Matulovic can even afford g4, and now this knight really has nowhere to go. Uh, next move, bishop to c5 will trap the knight either with check, but even if the king moves, uh, the knight will be captured. So instead, after this rook to c2 move, uh, Fisher decides to sacrifice uh, the piece, but as you'll see, only temporarily. Uh, h captures on g5, we have rook captures on e2, and now comes g6. Uh, rook to b2, this comes with check, king to a6, and now comes rook to b4. Rook to b4 attacking the a4 pawn, trying to trick Fisher to either defend the pawn with king to a5, which loses the game after rook to g4, 
Uh, now the g7 is no threat as the bishop and the rook are both guarding the g7 square. Uh, or even after rook to b4, a5, if that's played, also rook to g4 will prevent uh, Fischer from doing anything with this uh, g6 pawn. Uh, but Fischer doesn't allow uh, Matulovic to trick him. He pushes g7 immediately, doesn't mind the a4 pawn. Uh, we have bishop captures, rook captures, and now rook captures on a4 with check. Uh, king to b4 and now comes rook to d4 and uh, if you check out this position Matulovic is up two pawns uh, but it's very hard for him to take advantage of it okay uh, Fischer can't uh, get anywhere near the pawns with his king uh, but Matulovic uh, can't do anything with his king uh, either because Fischer's rook uh, cut it off uh, from uh, from entering the game so okay rook to e7 Fischer goes after the after the pawn we have rook to e4 defending but now king to c5 Fischer is now able to improve the position of his king uh, king to d8, Matulovic also improves the position of his king, rook to a7, uh, and now king to e8. King to d6, uh, we have king to f8, and now rook to b7. Uh, rook to e3, uh, we have rook to a7, and now rook to e1. Uh, rook to b7, uh, rook to e4, and now rook back to a7 by Fischer. Uh, rook to e2, we have rook to b7, and now rook back to e3, attacking the g3 pawn. Uh, rook back to a7, and now comes king to g8. Uh, rook back to b7, rook to e1, and now rook to e7, again attacking the e7 pawn. And here there's really nothing to do, uh, rook to e3 was played, rook captures by Fischer, uh, rook captures on g3, and here after king to e5, uh, the game, uh, they, they, they agreed to a draw. So, okay, you're up a pawn, but there's no real way to take advantage of it, even if you defend it, uh, rook here uh, is coming, and whatever you play, simply... Uh, the rook will be grabbed and uh, the the kings will be will remain bare naked. So yeah, after king to e5, uh, a very nice uh, draw. Uh, both of them played a, a very nice game, and even though uh, Fischer really uh, really tried to, uh, to do everything, uh, Matulovic really played a, a very nice pawn sacrifice uh, in in the beginning of the game. After this, uh, after this queen to c4, knight c7, captures, captures, and then queen captures, and this queen d3. Uh, first, the uh, queen stifled Fischer's development, then the bishop stifled it, and then the knight from e6 to f4 to d3 uh, also helped out with, uh, you know, really not allowing Fischer to develop any pieces. Uh, but in the end, it was, uh, there's it, there's really no way to tell uh, if Matulovic could have won this game uh, in some in some fashion, uh, but definitely, you know, if if you ask the engine, the engine really really likes knight to f2 check here <laughs> and picking up the rook. Uh, but Matulovic wanted to create something beautiful, you know, perhaps uh, something something that will <laughs> remain uh, in chess books uh, for you know uh, and st and stand the, the test of time. Uh, but in the end, he managed to get only a draw. But even this draw, you know, uh, stopped uh, Fischer from his crazy winning streak. So it's uh, a draw from game one, then five wins in a row, uh, then uh, a draw against Milan Matulovic. But still, uh, an excellent game by Fischer and uh, an even greater game by Milan Matulovic. Uh, but, you know, still still a very nice uh, streak for Fischer uh, without a single loss so far. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. That's uh, round number seven from uh, Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament of 1970. I do hope you enjoyed it and that you have enjoyed uh, my coverage of the series so far. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Kyle Kerr uh, for your uh, contribution to my channel, uh, helping me out with the design uh, of my YouTube cover and my Twitter cover. Uh, you know, all of you are welcome to check it out. Uh, I will also put uh, a link to Kyle's social media in the description below so you can check out some of his other work. Uh, it's also very nice. So I do hope you enjoy that as well. So yeah, uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon uh, with uh, another game uh, from the Bobby Fisher series. Thank you all and see you soon.